every single day that you and i wake up to meet comes with its own burden like scripture says that sufficient for the day is its own trouble and based on the burdens and the things that we have to go through sometimes we find ourselves in a place that we feel alone like nobody cares like the burden we carry as if the weight of the whole world is on our shoulders whether it's a family pressure marriage pressure relationship problems whatsoever it is and god has given me an encouragement to share with you in today's video that is god is saying to you you are not alone there are places and things that happen in your life that makes you feel like you are alone god has forgotten you god has left you and in this video i have four points that i want to share as god has laid it on my heart that he is telling you even if you are feeling alone you are not actually alone one when you feel weak and weary god is saying to you you are not alone i want to first of all tell you that it is okay to feel weak it is okay to be weary why you are a human being you are not a robot you're not a spirit you are a human going through things and having to face problems and emotional trauma or whatsoever thing that you have to deal with it's going to make you feel weak that is just the human condition and you should not beat yourself up for feeling weak or weary but you should know that your faith as a believer does not deny facts the fact is that you feel weak but the truth from the word of god is that you shall not live by your feelings you're not meant to live by how you feel they just shall live by faith your faith is your support system your faith is your foundation your feelings are not your feelings are real they are valid you don't have to deny them because even god does not deny how we feel but he tells us that there is a truth in his word that can override the fact that we are facing and that is to bring to your consciousness that you should not entertain the feelings of frustration and disappointment as if to wallow in them it's okay to feel that way but don't wallow in that feeling don't aim to remain there pivot to your faith because you are to live by your faith that is your only foundation your feelings are fickle they will always change at some times you feel happy things will happen that makes you happy other times things are there readily available to make you sad and the thing is that god did not promise you that this life is going to be comfortable all around he said in this world you are going to see tribulation and in the language you use you are going to see shege anyways there are so many problems and troubles in our world that you cannot even deny it even if you want to live in denial so it is not your place to start saying oh, why should you feel weak why should you feel weary no it's okay to feel weak and weary because you are human but then there is a strength in god that you can tap from each day of your life for you to know that i need god's deposit in my life if the scripture says that god daily loads us with benefits why wouldn't you want to go to god every day to receive this benefit as if it is a deposit of god for you because see it like you deposit money in an account why because you are dreaming to use it to do something in the future or when you have some issues you go withdraw from it if you keep getting deposits of god through his word to build your faith to anchor you whenever you're going through life challenges you have what to withdraw from that deposit and that can happen by you reading the word of god by you staying in a place of prayer and devoting your time to focus on God. When you feel weak and weary, God is with you. David said in Psalms 27 verse 13, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted. I would have lost heart. I would have given up. I would have entertained my feeling of weakness and become weak for real. Romans chapter 4 verse 19 speaks about Abraham, how he was not weakened in his faith. And it says, And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. Even though Abraham was weak in the flesh, he, he admitted the fact that his body is as good as dead. Same thing with Sarah's womb. But that did not make him 
doubt God or get weak in his faith. Because the fact of his life is not greater than the God who made him. The God who made him and has given him a promise, I'm going to give you a son. And he is 100 years. He is not weakened in faith. That did not mean that he did not make mistakes. That did not mean that he didn't have feelings that made him want to tell God, are you sure you're going to still do this? So I would submit this to you. Even though you feel weak in your flesh, do not let your faith be weakened by the weakness of your feelings. No matter how you feel, don't let that be translated to your faith or affect what God has promised you. Even when you are weak, God is saying to you, you are not alone. Two, when you feel heartbroken and discouraged, God is saying to you, you are not alone. The feelings of heartbreak and discouragement will lead you to that place of feeling like you are alone. Because once you're heartbroken, you want to choose to be in solitude. You want to go away from everybody else. And even if you are in the midst of people, in a crowd, you won't feel like you are with people. Because on the inside, you feel so broken. You feel like you are alone. Whether it's in the loss of a loved one, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a job, the loss of a business deal, or whatsoever loss, it breaks your heart. Whether it's through disappointment, you expected something to come through and it did not. The disappointment will break your heart because hope deferred makes the heart sick, says the scriptures. So there are so many things in this life that are going to make you discouraged. And all God wants you to know, no matter how you feel, when you are heartbroken and discouraged, you are not alone. He is with you. Your friends when actually desert you some friends may not want to identify with you when you are going through difficult times but that does not mean that your god who made you is not identifying with you that doesn't mean that your god who made you wants to leave you alone to sort it out by yourself even if it's a mistake that you did with your own hands by your own self even if it's as a result of your stubbornness and disobedience god is still readily there to help you out he is telling you are not alone. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. I love it in the message translation. It says, If your heart is broken, you will find God right there. If you are kicked in the God, He will help you catch your breath. My brother and sister, if there is anything that is bothering you, if there is anything that makes you feel like you can't, leave or you don't want to continue living because the heartbreak is enormous because the pain is breaking you i want to let you know that there is a god that is walking with you in the midst of what you are going through there is a god that says i am right here with you i understand how you feel the bible talks about jesus that he was on earth and he understand how to be heartbroken when jesus was facing the cross that he wanted to redeem the old world to fulfill the purpose of his coming to earth. He said, my soul is in agony. I am deeply sorrowful. He understands your heartbreak. We do not have a high priest who is just up there in heaven and does not understand how you feel as a man here on earth. He was a man and he knows how you feel. He walked where you walk through. He has seen this world. He has seen the wickedness in the world. And he knows everything and he understands everything. If I as a human being would come to you and tell you, Oh, I'm empathizing with you. I understand. I may be lying because I've not been able to understand every detail of what you have to walk through in your shoe. I would just want to empathize to try to get you to know that whatever you're going through, I'm right there with you. But the God who loves you knows everything, omniscience. And he also says, I don't just know it by knowledge. I've walked in your shoe. That he cried out at the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I know I'm getting ahead of myself in the next point I want to share. But I want to let you know, whatsoever discouragement, whatsoever pain and heartbreak that you have to go through, whether it's through divorce or whatsoever it is, God is still with you god has not said it is your mistake that has made you get to that place 
and you have to face the consequence of your mistake. No, God is not like that. God says to you, I am still with you. I know you don't feel it. I know it doesn't feel like it. I know you don't even want to believe that I am with you. But I want you to know that when you are broken hearted and your spirit is crushed, I am there with you. Three, when you feel forgotten and forsaken, God is saying you are not alone. Now, the feeling of being forgotten and forsaken, which is deserted by people, it makes us feel like nobody really cares. It, it, it can start from a place of your family members who only would want you when they need something from you. Or friends who only want to use you when they need something from you. Even in the office, colleagues and all who just want to use you, take advantage of you. Take advantage of your big heart, of your kindness, of, of you trying to just be compassionate and be a human. And we have these people all around us. And most times when you sit back, you can feel like I'm alone. Because all these people that are coming along, they will just use me and forget me. They will just come to tap whatsoever energy I have and leave me sapped. It's a sad place to be. And Jesus can relate with you. He is so relatable with what you are feeling, with what you are going through. The feeling of being forgotten, of being forsaken, of being left alone, being left to struggle or suffer alone. If you are in that place, God is telling you, you are not alone. Scripture says in Isaiah 49, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget a baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. This is such a beautiful scripture. I want you to go through it again. I love the analogy of the scripture talking about a mother. If you would understand the love that a mother has for a child, the love she has for her baby is so deep that she would not for any reason want to intentionally forget a baby no matter the circumstance but then something could happen that makes her forget a baby because of the issues of her life even though a mother loves a child this way and it's possible for her to forget a child i the lord will not forget you i always have you in my mind i always think about you psalm 139 says that the thought he has for us cannot be numbered. They outnumber the grains of sands. If you understand the grain of sands, that it cannot be counted. If scripture says that the thought that he has for us outnumber those grains of sands. And if only we could gain perception or perspective of how much he loves us, of how much he cares, of how much he is with us. Whenever we feel forgotten and forsaken by people around us, we would know that we have an anchor in God and that anchor is a sure foundation, a firm foundation. God has promised to never leave or forsake you. Let this promise be a reality in your heart that you are so certain and you know that my God loves me. My God will not forsake me. No matter what I'm going through right now, it is just a season. This will pass number four when you feel afraid and fearful god is saying to you you are not alone what can we say to these fears that we have what can we say when we wake up each day and we are afraid we tremble on the inside we tremble what's going to become of us the knowledge that we know that god is with us will drive our fears far away the bible says that when we don't know that we are loved by God, fear is the next response because perfect love drives out fear. By the time you are certain and know that God loves you so much, no matter what you have done and no matter what you are capable of doing, is love you bind your heart to focus on him. His love will bind your heart to reject your fears and cast the fears away. You don't need to try and purge yourself of fear. Oh, why am I feeling afraid? Oh, why should I feel afraid? You don't need to try and push your fear away by trying to psych it away. 
psychologically. There is a provision in God that when you receive his love and feed on his love, the fears inside of you will escape like vapor. Just like you will boil water and if you allow it to keep boiling to a certain point, all the water in your kettle or in your pot will escape. So by the time God's love comes in and the passion is developed in you for you to know that I am loved, I am cared for, God loves me, God cares for me, God wants me well, God is interested in my affairs, God is interested in every bit of my life, the fears in you will start dissipating. They will start running away. I want you to come to this realization and be encouraged today that when you feel afraid, when you feel fear, God does not run away from you. God does not desert you for feeling fear. Instead, he says to you, I love you. You are not alone. David says in Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? This is the reality. If I have God, why should I be afraid? Why should I fear? Why should I tremble? Same thing that is said in Psalms 23 verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. There is this assurance that you know you have. When you know that you are not walking through life alone, you have God walking with you because you know that you will not make mistakes. Why would you not make mistakes? He is speaking to you. He is directing you. He is showing you the way to go to. And by the time you know you are walking in obedience to his word, to his bidding, you are not going to walk in a faulty foundation. And I will leave you in conclusion with reading this passage in Romans chapter 8. That is very popular which you know about already can anything ever separate us from christ's love does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death no despite all these things overwhelming victory is ours through christ who loved us and i am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from god's love neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow not even the powers of hell can separate us from god's love no power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of god that is revealed in christ jesus our lord i want to leave you with this passage that Christ loves you so much. And no matter what you are going through, it doesn't mean that God has stopped loving you. When you go through difficult things, I know that we have a culture in the church that most times when we see people struggling and going through hard times, we start thinking, oh, it's because they are not obedient to God. It's because they have committed a sin. It's because they have done this or done that. That is a lie. People go through things because life happens. Negative, bad things happen. And that does not mean that God loves them less. They only need to know that God is with them and they walk through that path and become stronger. Most of the things you have to walk through will actually become things that strengthen you and make you stronger for the things you have to face. Sometimes God doesn't want us to be weak. And for us not to be weak, he allows us to go through things so that he will train us. Like David said, he trains my hand to walk. How does God train your hand to war if you will not lead you through things that you have to fight through? And when you fight through these things and come out on the other side, you are now stronger for the things that would come against you. And God wants you to be strong. I hope this video is encouraging you and you are encouraged watching. I would like you to leave your thoughts in the comment section and let me know what part of this video encouraged you or what are the contributions you would have. And if you have questions, about your work with God and things you would like me to make video about, just let, put it down in the comments or you can see my email in the description. Send an email to me. And I want you, if you love this content, share it to someone because my desire is for people to be encouraged and to get to see this. And your like and your subscription also means a lot to me. So thank you for watching and I would like to see you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye. God bless.